the Storm Sewer Network program has automated linkages to the TIN file or the DTM. There are two major distinct types of linkages. One is if you have an existing TIN that's associated with your Storm Sewer Network design, if you move a structure, then the rim elevations will change according to the new position, and so will the depth of the structure of the inlet. Also, if you update or alter the tin itself and keep things in the same location, rim elevations and depths will change. And there are three types of tin updates that we'll illustrate here. One is through the Surface File Manager. Another is the classic Edit Contours command and also Triangulation File Utilities. Now let's review what we have in this example. We have a profile view drawn and let's illustrate how this is done. If we go to the network pull down, you can go to the profile option under Draw Sewer Network. And here it's important to point out that if you save to the profile file, the DTM linkages to the plan view feed also to the profile itself. The profile links back to the plan view changes, the plan view in turn links back to the DTM changes. So our DTM changes can feed all the way back to our profile plot through the option Save to Profile File. We'll hit OK and just redraw here. We're working with the proposed TIN starting at manhole number 2 and going out to an outfall. And we'll hit OK and just simply replot it. We'll erase what's there and roughly in the same location, replot. We get to pick where our manhole IDs are located. And you can see that um, we've configured the annotation a certain way to appear as shown. But the beauty of this is you get to see the rim elevations, which are going to change as we do some of our edits. Now what allows for the DTM linkage to take place? If you go back to the network pull down, and select the top item, Sewer Network Settings, and focus on the General tab. This is actually a Storm Sewer system, so we'll click over to Storm Sewer, and focus on the uh, General tab. You'll see midway down that Link Sewer Network to Reference Surface in Centerlines is turned to Prompt, which is a prompted form of being on. It can, it can be completely automatic, where you're not asked to activate it or not, or it can be off. We've set it to prompt. Notice also that our associated surface is the proposed TIN file, and our working storm sewer system is the SEW file. Now we're going to hit OK. Also, let's point out that this is a three branched storm sewer system feeding into a lagoon at the outfall in the northeast corner of the site. Actually, it's the uh, Southwest, because our north is twisted uh, to the left there with the twist screen option. We would also point out that the blue areas were hand drawn watersheds feeding into the various inlets. Sometimes, if the DTM is simple and perfect, you can let the program calculate these watersheds and compute the composite runoff coefficient feeding into the inlets. If you deal with flat areas such as roofs or difficult DTMs, and it's best to hand draw knowing from site reconnaissance where the downspouts are and then direct the water from your hand drawn perimeters to the associated inlets. And we can illustrate how this is done. If I double click my way into the routine, I double click any of the annotation associated with the plotted storm sewer network. Under the drainage tab, you have the option to pick the drainage area or calculate it. With our hand-drawn areas, we would choose the option pick. Pick on one of our perimeters and it auto-calculates the runoff coefficient. In this case, consisting of a building area and then the default runoff coefficient is for the concrete paving on this uh, gas station site. If you go to select the button opposite runoff coefficient, you'll see there's only those two areas, 0.85 for the 
for your building area and 0 0.90 for the unassigned or concrete paving leading to a 0.87 composite runoff coefficient. That composite calculation is done everywhere no matter how complex um, the land cover breakout is. Now we're going to close this and not save any changes and go illustrate some of the DTM impacts. Let's focus first on item one, moving a structure, changing the rim elevations. What I'm going to do is move manhole or inlet number one, which currently has a 1003.42 rim elevation, also shown in the profile view. The linkages should run through both the plan view and profile view when we make the change. And what we're going to do is move this uh, manhole location. It's also going to impact the distance, 67.4 feet, or actually the first one, actually both will be impacted. 131 and 67 will be impacted. 131.27 will probably get shorter because what we'll try to do is move this manhole to the left and make the first run of pipe shorter to illustrate uh, the change. So we double click again to get the docked dialog and then we'll go downstream or, or back uh, upstream to manhole number one. There were two options there you see and we were prompted for which way to go. We went to manhole number one and at this location, we're going to move it. We'll hit the location button and pick a point and move it closer to the first inlet. And you can see that uh, already it's updated the plan view distance to 124.47, so that has already changed. And now when we hit close or save, followed by close. It recognizes there's a change, triggers back to an update of the profile view, and we say yes to all. Profile should have changed, and lo and behold, we have a different rim elevation and a different, different matching annotation of the length of pipe, both into manhole number one, and out of it. So that is one form of change. You've moved on an existing DTM to a new location. Things like distances and rim elevations change automatically. Now another form is where you change the tin itself but keep things where they are. So let's focus first on updating the tin by the surface file manager referencing manhole number two. For this, we go into the Civil module, the Surface pull-down menu, and select Triangulation Surface Manager, top item, and be sure we're set to proposed as our active tin set that current. You can choose to edit within this command or hit Done. And if you hit Done, you simply go back to Surface File Manager and go further down the pull-down list. Let's add a point. Let's at a point near manhole number two and raise the elevation there. Note the current elevation is 1005.21. We're going to go in the area of the triangle and closing this manhole inlet, pick a point and raise it to 1006.3. And that has created a new 1006 contour that didn't exist before. We'll hit enter. That's the only edit we're going to do to illustrate the point. And even the TIN network is shown. And notice how it triggered automatically the update. And it's asking us whether we want to update the sewer invert or the sewer depth. We want to hold that rim elevation and extend the depths. We want to update the sewer depth, not hold the depth and pull up the invert. So we'll update the sewer depth here. And this feeds back into the profile, as we stated before. So we'll update the profile as well. And now we'll go back and look 
at our rim elevation has changed. It's no longer 1,005.21, it's 1,005.80. And we'll note that has also changed automatically on our plotted profile view. Now the next thing we want to do is edit the contours. Now these contours are linked by another aspect of the software to the triangulation file propose.tin which we had just edited with the surface file manager. If you use triangulate and contour and make both contours and a stored tin file you've created the linkage. Here we've created the linkage by another mechanism surface file manager but in either case where the linkage exists if you edit the contours using the uh, edit contour command found under modify contours edit contours then it works the other way where you've placed the new contour after the edit how you've modified it impacts the, the stored tin file so we'll go to edit contours and what we'll do notice that this this inserted position was just below 1006 let's drag this contour completely around manhole number two so we'll pick where we want to start the edit and link the triangulation to match the contours we'll say yes to that option and then we'll work our way well around the inlet then we'll hit enter prior to reconnecting and reconnect over here let's pick a reconnection point right about there there we go and now we'll hit enter for no more contour edit and here it again has triggered the update and notice that the, the manhole position is now above 1006 and we want to update the sewer depth and use that current rim elevation keeping the invert elevation at the same position so only the depth changes we'll update the depth and we'll update the profile view as well. Now let's move up to the profile view and see if it's over 1006 and sure enough it is. So the profile has been changed automatically and the plan view. Now for simplicity I'm going to go to the view pull down and freeze the contour and tin layer. And let's illustrate the third option of TIN modification leading to automated updates of our sewer uh, in plan view and in profile view. Item C here, triangulation file utilities. So let's do it in a very simple way. Let's draw a rectangle using the rectangle command. That's an AutoCAD command uh, around the area. Um, and uh, uh, we have that perimeter. Just a second, I'm going to undo that and just draw a polyline around that. I'm in some kind of layer. Just a second, I'm going to view, set my layer to another and uh, draw a polyline in this new layer. There we go and hit C to close. It can, it can be a figure of any shape. Now in that shape we're going to raise the site half a foot so the rim should change to 1006.58. Here we go. We'll go to triangulation file utilities. We'll load the current tin which is proposed which has been modified a couple times. We'll pick the bounding polyline. The area of focus is just this perimeter right here no exclusion polylines at the command line. We will then hit the next button to move on and we'll add a value of 0 0.5 and then save it back as proposed tin. Replace the one that's there, tin file saved, now hit the exit from tin file utilities. Again it has triggered the update and the manhole number two is now 1006.58. Update the sewer depth and update the profile and you can see in plan view we are changed and going back to profile view 
we are changed there as well. So we've illustrated the linkage of the tin to the storm sewer network, which can be set up to flow not only into the plan view annotation, but all the way out to the profile view.